Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. Andy Anderson will be moderating tonight. I'd like to welcome everybody to the college. The uh, college has basically two rules. One is no personal attacks. The other one is uh, no, uh, no, uh, no uh, I'm sorry. No what? One fool at a time and no personal <laughs> attacks. And it looks like I'm the fool with the way I'm announcing today. The college consists of the following format. There'll be a brief announcements period, followed by a question and answer period, followed by our infamous rebuttal period. During the questions, we ask that you form it in the question because you'll have a chance to speak your full mind in the rebuttal period. So I'd like to introduce our speaker, Sharon Sanders, and her statement is, Donald Trump is not my president. I think uh, that sentiment is shared by millions and millions of people. So, I'll, uh, if there's no further ado, uh, let's have a hand for our speaker. Well, I, you might find that I get all over the place when I start to talk, because I get so emotional on so many things that I, I tend to rant. Um, as you said, my name is Sharon Sanders. I have a whole history of being a political activist um, from the time I was young. Um, and I started with the with JFK and Nixon. I had parents who were my mother was a republic was a communist. My father was a Republican Jew, and the table that unheard of. You know, Jews were never Republicans at that time. And so politics. I was born and raised with politics. And I found myself first going to Nixon and then over to JFK and then right in the middle where I think I've, I've sort of ended. Um, as the years go by, I remember coming home from school and listening to the McCarthy hearings and wondering, I always had a fear of, of the fascists, wondering when this could happen where the entire country was taken over by, by a group of fascists. I knew it could happen because I knew that people are so vulnerable to misinformation and lies and blame that I was waiting for 50 years, I 60 years, I waited for this time to come. I waited not anxiously, I waited in trepidation. So uh, over the course of the years, I have started many organizations, uh, many of which have led to where we are with Donald Trump and the Koch brothers. One of them was the uh, Coalition to Restore Democracy. And we had 25 groups we pulled together to work on a uh, amendment to overturn Citizens United, because we knew once once we had Citizens United, there was no hope. Once it was money is a, a, a money is speech and a corporation. I mean, corporations are people, and money is speech. There was no hope because you were going to be able to buy every single election. And then the McCutcheon, uh, you know, uh, was enacted after that. So we are being encircled by vast sums of money uh, that have brought both parties, Republican and Democrat, and we have seen what has happened over the years, and it's been a re total regression. But what bothers me is that people, whenever I go someplace, I insist on talking about the Koch brothers and ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, because to me, those are the real villains. And if you don't know who they are, and I'm sure everybody in this room does, and I go to many rooms where they don't, I try to educate them, quote, or inform them that this is really, these are really the ones that are influencing what's happened in this country. Um, the Heritage Foundation, all their shadow groups are what really is the power behind what is going on. Um, one of the things, when I see Trump, when Trump was elected, I already saw that we were, he was only elected, really, because the Koch brothers and Alec had made these all red states. They had gerrymandered the states. They had, um, what are, I'm trying to think of the word I want to use. They had gerrymandered the states. They had redistricted them. They had uh, used voter suppression, uh, with pushing voter ID laws, and making this into a red country. And the, and the greatest fear I have is not even so much Trump, but I know that we're one state away uh, from the Koch brothers' goal of having a constitutional convention. And people don't know this. They are dying to rewrite the, the, amend, the uh, Constitution. They would like to change the First Amendment, and they would like to change many amendments, all in their favor. 
So I talk more about the Koch brothers than I do about Trump, who is, of course, much more fun to talk about and, quote, fun. Um, we are, I'm with, uh, uh, Refuse Fascism is one of the many groups that have signed on with us. And when we first started only a few months ago talking about fascism, people said, oh, you can't say that word, you can't say that word. And I think a few weeks into Trump's, um, you know, his uh, tenure, we, we can basically see, say that we have a fascist government. And people are not, the problem to me is they're not educated, they're not informed, they're not hearing anything from the corporate media that is that actually put Trump into, into power. I mean, they put him in power. He is not... He is not a co typical co person. He, they like somebody more like uh, Pence, who they put in. They also have put in all the other cabinet members that are going to destroy every single cabinet that we have, every position. Their whole goal is to destroy or privatize every one of the cabinet positions. So I don't give the credit for all this to, to uh, Trump. I, you know, other, other than Steve Bannon, uh, I, I think he just says to Pence, you pick out who you want and you know they can run it and we see with the EPA we see with every single department the whole goal and again the Kochs the Koch brothers Alec this is their goal is to destroy the federal government put it in the states and then pro probably bankrupt the states uh, I've talked to people down in Springfield and they feel that is what Rauner's goal was and of course Rauner is one of he's part of uh, Alec he went to meet them a few weeks ago uh, on the west coast so, you know, the thing is, we're, if you're progressive at all, we have thousands of organizations, literally thousands of different organizations on different subjects, and they have one leader, they only have one, and that's Alec, and people don't know it, that's Alec, who calls all the shots and, tell, and writes the voter um, templates of, le of legislation, gives it to their, their, their legislators, they write the laws. They have 20 or 30,000 people out there right now, foot soldiers. Some are paid and some aren't. In all the states, already uh, getting ready for the 2018 election. I look at Tammy Baldwin. They have spent a fortune on Tammy Baldwin to dirty her up as a lesbian. And that's how they, you know, they play dirty. They, nothing is ever nice. Nothing's ever fair. It's not, when I was in high school and you ran for office, you know, you played by the rules. You talked about yourself and your candidate talked about himself. And the, use of the better candidate or the most popular candidate won. Now it's as dirty and filthy as it can be. And to me, this is a fascist, fascist government. Now, you know, when they're not done yet, we haven't even, we haven't even seen the beginning of it yet. The Democrats, and I was a Bernie Sanders delegate, and I was in, and I was in Philadelphia. The problem is that they, too, were bought by corporate money. What, you know, you saw this at the convention. It was just a glamorized, beautiful show, um, and no issues were really talked about of substance. So I'm a Bernie Sanders Democrat, and I'm of the opinion that we push the party. We don't, I'm not even worried about the third party. The third party is the Koch party, as far as I'm concerned, that we must begin to push the Democratic Party to the left. I, you know, I just got, my husband just got something from, um, uh, the Americans for Prosperity, I don't know how it got on their list, oh. and they talk about socialism and how horrible and how it's destroyed the world. Well, I like Social Security and I like Medicare, and I've worked hard for it and so has my husband. Um, I like the fact that you help people who, who can't help themselves. That's what America's supposed to be for, and they're, they're making it sound like this is a horrendous thing. We need to help our seniors, we need to help the poor. These people are such hypocrites because, of course, these are the pro-lifers, which I'm pro-life as well, but the minute the baby's born, uh, there's nothing for them until the day they get them out of the parking lot at 18 to, uh, not the parking lot, the school, the school playground, so that they can, uh, you know, go and serve for their next wars. They don't go to war. They send these poor children to war. So, you know, they're, they're moral hypocrites, and we have to call them out on that. They're religious hypocrites. And I was, I was saying, you know, it doesn't matter which religion, as long as, or even politics. It's the extreme that is so bad, and the extreme wants to control everybody else. So we have a huge job out there to to work for civility and to say we have to cross lines, whether you're gay or you're black, white, whatever you are, that we're all people. And that's the, that's the one thing they don't want. They want to break the unions. They want to break, get rid of uh, gays. They want to get rid of immigrants. Um, they want to get rid of blacks, and they do that by 
the, the, the typical fascist or dictator way is, you know, pitting you against each other. And my theory is that we have to say to them, we're not going to do it, we're not going to buy into it. Uh, even next Tuesday, I have a meeting on the south side with some people, and we're going to bring Latinos and blacks and whoever, Americans, into the, you know, into this and try to see what we can do about Rauner. Because Rauner, by the way, um, as I say, he's a part of ALEC. He made, they don't talk about this on the media, not only did he make his money by flipping corporations uh, and, and getting rid of jobs, but he also was a big, um, his hedge fund really ran a lot of the public pensions that we have, and nobody talks about that. Any hedge fund manager makes their money by skimming off the top on the beginning, whether they win or lose, they take huge chunks, and then they take fees if they win, if, they, if it goes up a little bit. That's how we lost our money in pensions, is by the abuse of the fund hedge fund managers. So we have to go after Rauner, we have to make sure we don't get any more uh, red states because we're going to be in real trouble, and that is their goal. So of the many groups I've started, including Move to Amend and a bunch of them, my concept now is, it's called United for Democracy Now, and I have a lot of people working on it. Beef barley is that we have so thousands of groups and everybody says and they'll call me and they'll say what should i do i want to do something i can't i have to do something and nobody knows where to go so my theory is we have to have a clearinghouse of groups and i have put together a database of over 400 now and maybe thousands more of groups that can come together in different ways one is that we can agree that at some point we're all going to have to act together we're going to have to act together because we are going to be in such dire straits with this administration. Um, so the thing is that we're going to we have a database of over 400 groups. We have a Facebook site, a site that we have where people can come and find out what's happening, and people can get involved at any level they want. So if you want the invite, you care about the environment, you want to get involved with that, we can tell you what organizations are available in your area. Uh, I, I had a meeting with a website developer. We're going to be able to, to send people to the to the website where they can click on their state, their city, and then what they're interested in. Everybody has to play a part. Everybody has to, to be willing to, not everybody, but I mean we're going to have to be willing to go out of the state and get into the red states and, and tell voters, just like the Koch brothers are doing, why we are heading for true fascism if we do not stop what's going on. That we will have nothing but poverty in this country and the billionaires. And we have to tell them the billionaires got to be billionaires by making use of the ordinary person or shipping the jobs overseas. So when the Koch brothers or uh, Trump or you know anybody says, well, we lost the jobs, we're going to bring the jobs back. We lost the jobs because the big corporations shipped them overseas. And you know, and ship them to places like Foxconn, where they pay you know the sweatshop workers there. So instead of blaming the immigrants and the blacks for your job losses, you know, let's blame the people who cause it, which are the massive corporations. And these corporations, what you know, once they got stock options, everything was to prop up the price for the stock option. So um, and and the other thing they did, of course, was not only cut jobs, but they cut benefits and they ship you know and they and they cut health care. Um, and they made them into part-timers, and they refused to pay even $15 an hour. It's planned poverty for the rest of us. And But you go and you cut the health care program, and I worked on that. I was on, uh, people got mad at me because I didn't work for single pair. I worked with, with Citizens Action for Health Care for America Now. And I gotta tell you, Obama was no great shakes on, on working for a public option. He could have been out there, in my opinion, yelling about a public option, and he didn't. So not that that was perfect. Universal health care or Medicare for all would be, would be much better. We're never going to get it, not with these people in office, because they protect the you know, those with um, the, the pharmaceuticals, which are abusive, absolutely abusive. The whole medical system is abusive. So it, if we have to rise up as people and all, you know, nobody look at everybody, anybody else like they're, they're different because they're old, they're young. I mean, Bernie's people were millennials. We have to get them. And they said, I'm not voting for anybody else. I mean, I was a Bernie delegate, as I say, but the young people said, I want Bernie or nothing else. We can't. We have to get out there and vote against the these incumbents. Trump is, Trump is really a fascist, except that I don't think he's part of the Koch system. I think, you know, they're just accepting him because he's doing now what they want him to do. So Pence is really, Pence is really the one and who's running the show from everything I've read. 
and you can all dis disagree with me in a minute, but this is basically it. The concept is that we have to have a way to come together. They don't have thousands of organizations. We have literally thousands and thousands all over the country. Well, many of them fighting the same fight, but nobody talks to each other. So that's the concept I'm working on. I've got, we've got kids in California who are working in politics. They're, they're joining this. The bigger our umbrella, the more that, this is to me the only hope, the bigger our umbrella, the more they see that we don't care what people are, we don't care whether they're immigrants or blacks or whites or Jews or Christians, whatever. This is what scares them. And so that's, that's basically the concept going forward. As I say, I've been in many groups. I still work with Common Cause on voter fraud and, not voter fraud, election fraud. And I'm just gonna give you an example about what kind of person Rauner is. We have passed, Common Cause and a few other groups have passed automatic voter registration laws in Springfield. Bipartisan, and then he voted, vetoed it. Now why would you, how could you possibly veto uh, automatic voter registration? But of course he did. Sorry. And we went back and fought it and uh, the Republicans got scared and, and they voted um, against it. So we lost it and we're battling that again. I'm just giving you what's going on on the individual groups. Um, some of the battles, Reclaim Chicago, which is a great organizing group. They're out on the streets every day organizing and trying to get new progressive aldermen in. Um, every, so every group is doing what they can do, it's just that none of us hold together. We don't talk to each other. It's you're protecting your territory, and I think that's going to be our downfall if we don't do something about that. So that's basically my premise, and that's, that's what I, particularly as I get older, and I can't be out in protests all the time. I mean, I was there for the Women's March in Washington. I was the greatest thrill of my life, but then it's always, then what? Then what? Where do we go? So we have to pull each other together. And um, that's basically the premise. So if you wanted to ask me any questions, I mean, you know, I, I could talk politics. That's all I talk anyway. But that, for the sake of my, my grandkids, I, I will back up on one thing before I stop. The problem is somebody, somebody called me for an interview today, and they said, which issues are most important? And I said, there is no such thing. I mean, I have we have grandkids going to college, and they can't afford to pay for the college. We have Betsy DeVos's husband who runs a, a, a student, this is a conflict, student debt company, uh, total conflict of interest. Uh, I could lose, my, my husband and I could lose our Social Security, our Medicare, um, you know, I have a grand, we have a grandchild who's severely disabled, she could lose her Medicaid, then what? So there is no, the environment, our planet, um, what, you know, what, the other thing that the Cokes are behind is all this, you know, opening up the public lands to more and more drilling and moving farther and farther away from um, electric cars and, and anything that's uh, fuel efficient or good for the environment. They don't care. Stealing the water. I mean, there's just nothing. There's no place they're not grabbing and taking from all of us. So that's the fight, is, is for all of us to somehow put our egos aside and, and join together. And again, the group is called United for Democracy now. It's relatively new, so there's not, we don't have our website up. But it's really to help each other find what they want to do, how they want to get involved, at what level. We, we can't all do the same things. We don't all want to do the same thing. But we have to all do something, or we will not have a country left. So that's, that's basically it. Um, any questions or comments or, yeah. I've been hearing all the people telling us how we just didn't listen to the people in the outlying areas. And a lot of times it makes me angry because I want to say, you know, well, if you're working at a butter churn factory, it's probably going to close. And I feel like they've rejected a lot of the stuff like clean energy factories that they couldn't have moving into their area. But how can you educate people that don't accept facts as facts and live emotionally with a basis of fear in their lives? And certainly a lot of them are Christians, but like how can you say to them gently, you know, first of all, the Christian thing, the person you voted into office is as close to Antichrist as I can think of. And he wants to take from the poor and give to the rich. What part of his message says Jesus to you? Like, how do I... I have a trouble connecting because I have a very short fuse with incredibly irritating people. 
I, I, I don't think you can read, those who are religious and believe that, that we have to get rid of Roe versus Wade, I don't think we're going to change them one iota. And you're not going to change the people who um, are, are full of hate and they, and tip of like, like, you know, Hitler, the they're Nazis, racist. you know, let's blame, the, you know, blame them. They're black, they're white, they're Jewish, whatever, I mean, they're black, they're Jew Jewish, whatever it is. We're not going to change those, but those who think that they really were going to get jobs from uh, Trump, and he was going to bring the jobs back, those are the people maybe we can wake up and, and make them realize this is not going to happen. We should be retraining people for the trades, for new professions, and that's what we should be doing. He's not going to do that. He talks. So that the only chance, and the chance that the thing is also, I remember working for Bernie, I went to Wisconsin, I went out to Iowa. Um, Iowa now, I mean, they voted heavily for, for Trump, like all those red states. It's because he sold them a bill of goods if he was going to make America great again. Well, America, you know, is pretty great in certain ways, and what is he going to do? Where is he going to bring those jobs back from? So we have to convince them that that's not the way to go, that you're not going to have your, your factory jobs back at $35, $45 an hour. It's so, not you know, going to happen when not, you have uh, somebody in Asia that's so desperate to eat that $14 a week sounds awesome. Well, exactly, exactly. So the, the, really the question is how do we get them back? I think we have to be foot soldiers and go to these red states and work and knock on doors and explain to them that it was the corporations that took your jobs. It wasn't those immigrants. I mean, you know, I'm not sure what the conversation should be exactly, but we really need to be out there working the crowds and, and explaining that if you, you want to save this country, fight for your Social Security, fight for your Medicare. You're going to have nothing. You're going to have no retirement. If we have a financial collapse, which very well could be, because I was listening to Tom Hodgman, one, one third of all uh, car loans now are prime, subprime car loans. And that's true with housing again. And they're, they're, they're issuing all this debt. And if something collapses, something happens, and you know you have another 08 again. It's the new slavery. Yeah. It's yeah. economic slavery. Well, that's true, and they know they're right. Yep. Yeah, he was okay. Uh, Sharon, uh, uh, you're very good. I, uh, I, you're speaking about a lot of the topics. You have a really good uh, handle on everything Thank that's you. going on. Um, one, can you uh, talk about your background, who you work for, and uh, your history and your experience in it too. I see a huge problem with all these thousands of left-wing groups. Now understand that right-wing people consolidated media, consolidated right-wing radio, consolidated these PACs, <coughs> you know, money, people. And, I, and, 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 and if you're going to have left-wing people and thousands of groups spread out across the country, I just don't see you going anywhere. Maybe you should be the person that well, that's what we're working on. I work with a lot of people. We have a lot, I have a lot of events. Maybe there maybe, should be one big progressive party now. Well, I don't know. I don't know what if that's the answer. The Democrats are working very hard right now. The problem with Democrats know. is there no, the there's Democrats. no statement from them. There, there's no, no program. To me, it's it's frustrating because they could just be saying, "This is what we can do in the inner cities of Chicago. This is what we can do." to help people. It's, they're, they're too generic. And you know what Debbie Wasserman Schultz and that whole crowd that we dealt with at the convention. This is what the Democratic Party is. That's why I personally would like to see Keith Ellison in. And maybe the other gentleman's OK. But they better get their act together, or they're not going to win. It's time for a Right, exactly. Democrats are really. So what's your background? Uh, my background, I mean, I've been a political activist all my life. I think the time I was born is, is what it is. I was a special ed teacher. I worked with. Uh, hardcore kids, kids with really severe problems. And then I have a master's in, in diagnost, diagnostic and remedial reading, and I work with families. I, I always went and worked for the underdog, so families who came to Northeastern University and the reading center that I helped run, I would tell them how to be proactive in the schools and get their children the services they needed. I always feel you got it, that was my feelings. You have to help those who can't help themselves. So I, you know, I've always been that way. And one one story that comes to mind, though, um, is that when I was a special ed teacher, this is, was scary to me. There was a group, and they're still around, called Selection Research from Lincoln, Nebraska. And all of a sudden, I'm the board, the school board, were made up of people who who were not happy with their own life, so they wanted to pick on teachers, you know. Uh, some boards are good and some aren't. This was a terrible board, and they hired them. And they had what was called perceivers. They were called perceivers. Just the word perceivers made me really, really feel creepy. So 
what I'm, this is where my strong area is, so I began to organize, I researched them totally. They really were like right-wing religious fanatics, and they're still doing this stuff. And they would sell like um, a packages, you had a student perceiver, you had a teacher perceiver, you had a superintendent perceiver. Children were, were supposed to fill out these perceiver and talk about their parents, what went on in their home, and that's like 1984 and, you know, and the Third Reich. And I said, this can't happen. But what they did was, which is almost the same thing that's happening now, they would take certain teachers and give them little teardrops of, oh, you're doing a great job. And then, yeah. then they'd say to me, well, Sharon, why are you going after them? They're so nice. They're writing me these nice notes. That's classic how it works. And it took two years. I had to get the, na uh, I had to get the leaders in the community and the leaders in the school, in the uh, school district, to work together to get them out. And then WBBM did a, a, a special on them. But that's, that's, you know, that's one thing. I mean, but I was always, if a teacher had a problem, I would always go right after her and, you know, make sure that they, if, if I felt it was something that was, that they wouldn't be treated fairly, I'd go after that. What was I, the group called again? What? What was the group called again? Selection Research okay. of Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, I did check on them recently. They're still in business. Yes. I'd like to turn in my parents. You'd like to watch? I would have turned in my parents. <laughs> how, how, how can you say that the uh, Democratic Party should, should be more left wing when uh, the, the past uh, we, uh, the Republicans have gained a thousand representatives in, in, con in Congress and, uh, and, and the states are mostly Republican and the voters are, are more Republican. How, how, how could you no. not, not learn from uh, the, the uh, past elections? They're not, the, the, the people right now are not going to learn who are in there. That's why groups like Re, um, um, Reclaim Chicago and People's Lobby and quite a few others are working to put in more progressive people. And we're trying to work with the party to get away. I'm not sure we'll ever get there. Le I, left wing is a word I don't like. It's, 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 it's caring about people. We want the party to go back to the, I do, to the, F, the days of FDR. They're not learning because the thing is they're paid, here's the problem, they're paid off right now by the same corporations that bought the Republicans. They're not screaming and yelling in Congress right now, and you know that. And Obama didn't either. So, uh, yes, I would like them to become more left-wing. I, I don't know if it will ever happen. Well, you want this uh, Democratic, uh, the guy to be in control of the Democratic Party is a Muslim. He's a, uh, what's his name? What's his name? I can't speak. Ellison. Ellison. They want to make him... Uh, the head of the D Democratic Party. They don't want to. I mean, they don't know I what's want happening. Him. The people don't want all these Muslims coming in and taking over. See, that's a generalization. I know, I, I, one of the groups I work yeah. with is Open Communities. That's a great organization out of Winnetka. We had a huge event two years ago in Winnetka on the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's march on the Village Green in Winnetka. And we had so many Muslims, we had blacks, we had so many people with such diversity. To, to, say, to say that everybody who's a Muslim, I, I think that's ridiculous. Um, I know plenty of Muslims. We have millions of Muslims living here who cause no problems whatsoever. So I think, again, it's, I, I'm not scared of Muslims. I'm scared of ISIS and those groups that we help create by our illegitimate wars, but I'm not scared of the Muslims, many Muslims I know. They're all among us. I mean, they're not committing any more crimes than white nationalists. Like I mean, in Europe, uh, there's only about 5,000 jobs that they're working at, all these hundreds of thousands of Muslims, only 5,000 jobs. Uh, what are they doing? They're getting uh, welfare. They're I don't believe that's true. And even in places I don't believe like, it's true. Even in places like uh, Norway or Sweden, uh, they, they're finding out that, that why, why bring these people in? I don't, first of all, as a human being, I, I look at those people in Syria who, the way they've been treated, the inhumanity. Isn't that what we are as a welcoming country? Aren't we supposed to be a welcoming country? When as long as they're vetted, you know, but, but with that, Trump is just throwing them in detention camps right now. When you abuse people, they become abusers. These people were abused, but they're going to come here and be abusers. Yes. I, you know, I'm not in agreement with that. You make it's a general, it's a well, generalization. I'm not saying that some wouldn't, some would. Uh, I think it's a generalization. I mean, we're all from immigrants. I think we have to vet the people, but I think to turn all... And in the seven countries that Trump named, there's still... The, what happened to Saudi Arabia, who's, you know, Bin Laden came from there. So they so say the same crap in Japan about us. 
Well, what about all the Jews who were abused in Europe who came here and got immigrants? They didn't commit crimes. They're the back, the part of the back, all the rest of society. I mean, that's, these are generalizations. I would think he was, yes. Go ahead. Did you have your hand up? No. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Give me this guy. You know, about half the people didn't vote in this election. Yeah. Um, exactly. Have you reached them? Did I, was I out of that's order? Were you no, I don't know. Well, that's true, and that's, that's what I see as one of our jobs, that we have to get people, the young people particularly, to understand they have to vote. Yes. Okay, one second. Okay. Can moderator please take a place and uh, moderate this thing, discussion? So we yeah, don't we'll, we'll right next now. to speak. Yeah. Okay. So for whatever you have said, we've been talking for the last 50 years. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and you're talking the same thing. Okay. And uh, Clinton won. He did not win on this thing. Obama won. He like a Jesus Christ. He didn't win on this thing. Okay. And so how we are going to win next election? Okay. Tell me, tell me two or three points. Trump goes and says, I'm going to create a job. You know, he's got the biggest job revolution, and people understand what I'm talking about. You're talking about 50 organizations or 100 organizations. Nobody knows what the heck you're talking about. You're talking about, say, we are going to do Democratic Party strong, we're going to go left winning. What? Nobody understands, and nobody cares. Okay? Because not everybody's not activist. Everybody's not me and you. Everybody is that. They go to work, they come home. And they watch TV, go to sleep, or to have a beer. Okay, they are not talking about politics. How you? They are interested in their job. Well, they are interested in kids' education. They are interested what 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 is happening in country. And so, what is your formula? Two or three points. So you can say that hey, and they say hey, that's me. Well, I, I mean, this is why I have formed, we have formed this organization. Okay, well, you know, there is no perfect answer, and I can't give you a perfect answer. But I can tell you that what we do have to do is to get people educated and, and, and out to vote. If we don't win in, in 2018, let, let me back up for a second. People are going to learn what's going to happen because they're going to find that they're not going to have health care. Well, I don't, we'll see what happens with that. They're not going to have health care. They're not going to have Social Security. They're, they're not going to have investments for retirement. They're going to have nothing in retirement, the average worker. <laughs> That's going to affect them. They're not going to be able just to go to work and come home because they won't have anything for their families. Well, so I, I know they're you, gonna, I know you are not right. Because, because, because no, I'm not right. 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 No, you are not right. right. Because right. what is happening so far is that what Trump has done, he has moved to moderation on a foreign policy, on a domestic policy. He's getting to a a level where most Americans are comfortable, more, more Americans are getting comfortable. Okay, he, he hasn't come out to be a very radical thing, except except on a deportation okay. of Mexicans. I'd like okay. to remind him. He's been, he been doing fine. I'd okay. like to remind him. He's not everybody. radical. You say he's not radical? No. I didn't no, hear I, I, I think you, you may talk radical, All right. but when policy comes out, yeah, okay, Raj, right. I'd like to remind you, at the, yeah, this is a question like, period, yeah, not yeah, yeah. Well, well, I say there's um, speeches and summaries for the end of the rebuttal okay, period. The, the, right, right now it's questions. He is radical. When you have, when you put, it's very simply, you put someone like Steve Bannon in as your national, as your advisor, your main advisor, and on the National Security Council, somebody from Breitbart like that, you're radical. Yeah. You don't do that. He should be out of office. Not just Trump, but Bannon. I agree. You know. Yes, uh, you brought up the issue of ISIS being sponsored by the United States directly, indirectly. And so, why do you, and that's an important thing, you'd agree, I'm sure. Uh, but yet, it isn't really talked about at all. You know, it's something that you said, uh, yeah, this happened. Uh, you know, it happened in Afghanistan originally, and it's, you know, to overthrow regimes. Regime change, and um, it's interesting. It's, well, okay. The, the question is, uh, why is it? Do you believe that is not emphasized in a big way? Because it's a very important issue. It's almost like it's never talked about. Well, first of all, I want to back up and say, I, you know, I don't think we sponsor ISIS. I think we caused ISIS by going into a war based on lies and starting with Iraq. Well, apparently, the money comes through places like Turkey and Saudi Arabia, etc., through the Sunni countries. You're talking about this very whole complicated I said process. Directly or indirectly, you know. well, but I think right. that's important. 
but it's not talked about at all. I'm just wondering what your thought is. Well, I think we have about as, as, as controlled a media as, as I think our media is corporate owned, controlled. They put the message out they want us to hear, and that's it. So, But in the progressive groups, I don't hear it. <coughs> I get around a little bit, yeah. and I don't hear it very I hardly hear it at all. It's almost like it, it's not an issue. And interestingly enough, it's something that, of course, Trump has emphasized. We're not going to do regime change. And I think Bernie uh, also believed in that. So, uh, you know, why do you think it's not talked about, I guess? I don't mean in the mainstream media. I, the I personally, I think, I, I, my opinion now, I think it has become such a confusing, multifaceted issue that nobody seems to know what the real story is, and the American public lives on sound bites. And if you can get beyond sound bites, so they say ISIS is our enemy. This is what they say. That's our enemy. You, you, you know that you cannot just go in and get rid of ISIS. Our enemy that we've created. Right? Is what? It's our enemy that we've created. That we've created. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't just go in and get rid of ISIS. We go around and get rid of ISIS here, and we have ISIS there. I mean, they're all over the place. Yeah, uh, putting things in a nutshell, uh, would you agree that the uh, Democratic Party has kind of lost its way as the spokesman for the American working person, as the spokesman for strong America, as the good guys, as it were, and that we have allowed ourselves, and I'm a Democrat, we have allowed ourselves to be roped into things like sending jobs overseas right. in the name of, uh, you know, completely bogus uh, trade treaties, and that people heard Donald Trump. They liked the words, they just didn't realize what the music was. And uh, that we need to return to Franklin Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, people uh, like that. And I realized Teddy Roosevelt was not a Democrat. No, but I know, he but just he acted, he just acted right. like that. Right. <laughs> you know? I, I think everything, you're, you're saying exactly what I feel. Mm -hmm. I think we don't have time for a third party now. I think, right. I think we don't have time because 2018 and 2020 are going to be disastrous. And as I said, the Cokes have a plan to get one more state and they want to rewrite the convention, the uh, Constitution. We don't have time for a third party now. And the third party, like the Green Party, splits us just like Nader did. I'm a Democrat, and I'm not proud of the party. I go to, I try to help, I try to be involved, and I try to get people out, but they're not my party the way that, I mean, they don't represent, I'm the Bernie Sanders wing. Yeah, Charlie Ben. Oh, Charlie, yeah. Wait a minute, Charles I've Charlie been Trump. a Democrat, well, in Congress for 35 years, and I'm a Democrat, and what's this, I'm ashamed to be a Democrat? If you're ashamed to be a Democrat, are you proud then to be a Republican? Come on. This, no, I'm not. This, I'm not. This, this this cost us the election, they weren't good enough. Them, well, they're not like that guy. He's, he's, he says they're not good. They're okay. They're okay. Good Democrat. They're not good enough. What's your choice, Republicans? No, Libert I, I, that's not been <laughs> Libertarian. I'm a Democrat. I just don't so think. So don't vote. All right, Charlie, so let us speak. What if he ended up with Trump? That's what you want? We need a Gary Johnson. You didn't vote? What, I, I lost your question, Charlie. What, what, well, I'm, what is this? What means that the Democrats aren't pure enough? I mean, hey. I'm a the Democrat. They're not, <coughs> yes. I didn't like every single candidate, every vote, but I didn't... I didn't bellyache about the party. Somebody asked me what am I am, I said I'm a Democrat. I say I'm a Democrat and I'm not happy you with know, what they're doing. Without qualifications. Oh, I have to have qualifications. This is no, not the party why? that this is not the party that I that I started with years ago. They're not out there fighting for for the average person. They're not. They're just not out there. And you can see that at the convention. Totally corporate. They're they're not fighting for you and me. What do you what do you see them doing? Sharing it. Yes. One, two, or three, right? All right, Charlie, you asked. Ask you're okay? I'll call you later. Okay. I, I want something else. Go ahead. Are you ready? The, the, uh, the, 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 the Democrats in, 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 in the city and the state have voted themselves 3% compound interest on their pensions every year, every year. 3% compound interest. It's bankrupting this state. They're raising our income tax to pay for these fat cat Democrats who are getting their What's pensions. What's your question? 
what, what can be done about these pensions? These people are getting so many Well, I'm going to tell you, what? which is one of the things that drives me crazy. It, we talk about, we never talk about the corporates and their taxes. They don't pay taxes. They pay almost nothing. 73% of Illinois corporations don't pay any state tax. And nobody talks about it. When you go down to Springfield and you say, why aren't they paying a fair share of tax? They'll say, well, we don't want them to leave the state. They're not going to leave the state. You know, why is it just we have to pick up the burden? Why do they allow groups like Apple at the federal level, Apple to send all their money over there in shelters, you know, and hide them at wherever, in the Baha you know, Bahamas or, or in the Cayman Islands? Why are they allowed to do it? And, and Trump's going to be worse. He's going to be even worse about it. Getting 70000 just to stay home. Yes. They're, 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 and, and we got to pay for, for their pensions. Uh, you know, that you're, you're giving me the, the that's, that's sort of the right wing kind of thing or whatever it is that says, you know, um, our pensions are bad. All right, all right. Um, right. Yeah. In response to this gentleman Go here, uh, um, we had Iraq War One, we had Iraq War Two, we had Panama, we had Afghanistan, and now we're in Syria. Uh, there's 20, 25 trillion wasted. Right. An endless war. That's for sure. And you want to you want to talk about fat cats? Well, Three billion a month on, on what's what's it called off the books for for Iraq. You can add Vietnam to that too. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So we have we have more than half of our federal budget is military. And, and, we have plenty of money for that, but and, we don't have it for pensions. We don't have it for workers. For and the war the wars uh, brought us nothing. But more war. That's exactly right. And that's why I go back to the point where these pro-lifers, they want the babies born, oh, yeah. do nothing until they're 18 and then drag them oh. off for their wars. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to let you know I have a lot of friends in Arizona and things are stirring up there. So In a good way? In a good way. People are going out, there's a lot of action groups going into the neighborhood of... There's a question period. Chaff. So, well, this is it, but we have to pull them together. That's why I'm yeah. saying, we, you know, there, there are thousands of them, and we have to pull people together at some level and say, we're going to work together to bring this country back. We're going to make it great. Go ahead. You know, the strange thing about the middle America is that the demographic is that white males are dying, okay, through... White male's longevity is decreasing instead of flat or increasing, right? And when I looked at the vote, it was like, people voted for Obama for change. And people voted for Trump for change. These people are just suffering and dying. And you can't blame them for wanting change. I don't see it as a Democratic or Republican thing at all. And I don't know why you do. There's no, there's this, this has got, this cannot continue. Well, people I'm not people with are literally now. dying, and there's no answers okay. from the politicians. I'm not disagreeing. I just think that the approach of the of the right wing conservative Republicans is even worse, much worse than the Democrats. That's my opinion. I think no. that they're not. There's no jobs for them unless you retrain people on the trades or somewhere you educate them. There's no jobs for them, but they're blaming. I'm saying the problem is with the Republicans, particularly, they're blaming everybody else, and that's a classic fascist thing. We're blaming the Jews, we're blaming the blacks and the immigrants, and that's where the problem is. They're definitely, but how do they lose their jobs? They were shipped overseas. They closed up the factories and moved into Mexico and China and Vietnam, and they don't get, the corporations get away with murder. One of the reasons, of course, they own the media or the corporations that run them or advertise to them own it. Uh, I, I just want to tell you a quick thing It reminds me when I, there was a great documentary out there as to as our media. This woman had this reporter about 10 years ago had done a story about Nike and how terrible they were to their workers in uh, Vietnam or whatever one of those countries is. And she came back with this ter terrific documentary and then they got a call you know, from Nike and said if you put th that show on we're done with you. They not only pulled the story, but they made sure that all the reporters had Nike's, you know, this, uh, whatever it's called, this switcher or whatever it's called. So that's who controls them. The corporations are controlling the media and our political system. And we can only do it if we, we can only win if we all join together, no matter who it is. And that's why this group is nonpartisan. 
everybody joins together and, and joins the fight, and we agree that we don't hate each other because we're different. That's all. I'm, so I'm not saying Republican, Democrat. I'm saying we all have to come together. Yeah. Why, why did uh, Obama and his liberal agenda increase the national debt by $8 trillion, more than all the presidents previously? Yeah. And, and we all went to Wall Street. And they all. Uh, uh, once the national debt gets to be like $24 trillion, the, the, the country's bankrupt. So take it out of the military budget. We get guys like the F-15 that, you know, a few, a few airplanes that don't work and some missiles and some... He was a pacifist. Was he, was, he, was he starting wars? I mean, it wasn't going for wars when uh, Obama was the past eight years. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure about your facts. I don't know. I, your, your facts are not what I know. I don't know that he caused any more of a death than Bush or the rest of them, but you could be right. I don't know that. It wasn't paid for the wars so much. The, the wars were all, all, the wars all, right, were all, all right. off budget. Off budget. Let's go back to okay. the questions are for the question period. We'll have plenty of time for rebuttals tonight. Okay, so I wrap if, it up? No, no, no. Just, just we've got some more questions coming. Okay. I'm sorry. You say that there's many organizations out there, right? So, what I can order. gather for that, you know, what I get from that information is that the, United, the American people are not together. They're not together based on kinds of cheese. So, we need a leader so, so, to create kinds of people, not to create so many organizations. Uh, uh, those many organizations, what it's doing to the American people is, is separate the American people. They, there, What's there, your question? My question is: Would you, you're doing, you think you're doing a good job by talking on every uh, organization, or you should be concentrating on creating conscience? Because, because the human being, they all have this thing need. It's not such a thing like everybody is, is different. Everybody's same. They have the same need. Would you, would you be uh, for creating conscience? not separating the American people? Absolutely. I mean, I'm with you 100% on that. I'll, when I say there's thousands of groups, it's not that they're all fighting different things, but they've all, like on the environment. I must have, have 50 groups on the environment in the Chicago area, all doing a little piece of something different. They're not that they're all different, they just have started their own groups and so they're all over the place. It's, I think basically they want what you want. They want to care about people and their souls and their and helping each other, they all, but there's just too many of them. So they don't come together in unity, and sometimes their egos get in the way because people want to be at the top. So I'm agreeing with you. Okay. The conscience. Yeah. I'd like to know what you think America is doing right. Right now, I, I, I look at. I think the Women's March was unbelievable. I think that was right. It was, it was caring about people. I every place I go, there's. Where there used to be a few people for an event, there's hundreds. There are people out there that are great Americans who want to help each other. What the country's doing, great, I can't tell you right now. I, right now, I am so downhearted, I'm so disappointed as, in what's happening. As a corollary, how much of the change would you attribute to the government and, and all versus some of the things we've seen with globalization, with more integration around the world? the development of information technology. I mean, is it sort of some of this stuff that you're blaming on the government, just a natural way of the way the world's been going with trends and globalization? First of all, I'm not blaming the government, I'm blaming, I mean, within the government, I think, you know, regulation is probably over-regulated. There's good regulations, bad regulations, and now there's gonna be almost none. I think, I think it's the politicians who are going, who are taking control of those regulations and what they're doing with them. I'm not blaming the government, I'm blaming the people who, who run them. That's right. Um, so I think there could be good government and there's bad government and I don't think we have that much good government because the people who are running it are not doing a good job. They only care about their self-interest. I think we are in a period of great self-interest. Right, yeah, uh, what do you have to say to the type of person who views themselves as so Simon Pure they aren't going to vote because they do not want to be part of that dirty system. Uh, what do you have to say to them, and does it hark back to something that Edmund Burke said 250 years ago, 
all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. That's right. What you just said is exactly right. I don't think anybody, anybody can afford, and they owe the democracy to go out and vote. I think you, when you have a democracy, you owe it to get out and vote. And what you said in the second part is absolutely right. Nobody can afford today, especially, to sit back, nor could they ever. Have you ever missed an election for voting? I haven't, whether I wanted to or not. I mean, you go out, that's your American way, is you vote. Or my father didn't vote. And I'd say, well, then you can't complain. You have no right to complain. So I forgot who was. I, I, no, I. No, pick oh. somebody else. Yeah. Ellen, Ellen, you got a question? No, she needs it. She needs a place in order. Sorry. And who back? Um, I've already had one. Well, yeah, that's all right. Go ahead. Okay. He needs one. I don't think he's gone yet. Sharon, uh, a lot of people uh, think that Trump is uh, a worse danger than Pence, and Trump seems to be melting down and possibly will be impeached and removed, even that might be instigated by the Republicans because they might prefer Pence in there. What is your take on that? Is Trump a worse existential threat to the Republican? Would we, would we be better off getting rid of him and having Pence in there? You know, I think everybody's talking about that now. I think it's 50-50. First of all, I don't think they're going to impeach him. Um, and I think Pence would be worse in, in many ways. But I think they're both. I think it's 50-50. I think they're both horrendous human beings, is what I think. And I'm not sure that impeachment, we get not only get Pence, we get the whole group, Jeff Sessions, we get all of the same people there. And again, as I said before you came in, it's all part of the Koch brothers and Alan. And so we're not gaining anything by him getting out, in my right. opinion. Sorry. Yes, uh, another question about what is discussed in the progressive community. Uh, I'll frequently bring up the fact that, uh, you know, I used to work for the city of Chicago, so I have a pension. <clears throat> and in 2011, when Emanuel was elected, he sent everybody who worked in the city uh, a letter asking essentially to sacrifice about 40 to 50 percent of your purchasing power over 10 years to be a good citizen. He said we did nothing wrong. <clears throat> but, you know, the 15 wealthiest people in the Chicagoland area are worth $40 billion. The shortfall in the city of Chicago pension is usually... Well, I'm coming to it. I've already asked the question, guys. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, cited as $20 billion. So those people, and I'm just using them, you know, as a concept. We have plenty of other wealthy people behind the top 15. Why can't the progressive community actually get out there and start shaming these very wealthy people who mm. could give up some money, mm. solve the problem, and then they would be good citizens for the city of Chicago. Yeah. So what, what's your thought on My that? My thought is they should. You're absolutely yeah. right. The question is, who's, but, who's doing yeah. it? No, I mean, no, I know you would agree with it, but the yeah, progressive they're community they're does they're not they're go there. Well, like, they, they don't go there. They need to. <laughs> you know, something I'm just... No, I'm in, in perfect and total agreement. The question is, which progressives, and will they get, having done a thousand protests, will they get media attention? Will they get attention from the media? That's one of our biggest well, problems. Well, you, you, you need to protest the Pritzker family. That, that's exactly right. And you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Do you think? Right. Oh, right. Obama, Obama, wait, wait, he, he didn't have a turn. You know, he said me. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obama, Obama did a good job over eight years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Yes, the yes. Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement. And we work very hard against that. And one of the reasons is because it's such a corporate trade agreement. We know about these secret agreements that you, a, a big corporation can sue the country and in secret tribunals can make a decision without anybody being allowed in. Uh, so, for example, if a tobacco company wants to sue us for not allowing smoking in the restaurant, they say it hurts their profits, they can have, they can ask for a mediation and they can win. At what point do they have their profits is the question, at what point? So Obama was very much for that and it turned out he was for the TPP. That Mr. Froman, who ran the trade, trade department, was one of his best friends at Harvard. And so, I mean, it's an inside job. He, Petty Pritzker, talking about Pritzker, 
Betty Prisker was his biggest funder, and of course, what did she get? A big job in commerce. So, um, I, I, in many ways, I don't think he's as bad as Trump, but I, Jim? he could have used, what, here's another thing. Why didn't he use the bully pulpit the way Trump is using it? Calling press conferences, even if he couldn't get his way, okay? Even if he couldn't get a public option, why didn't he get out there and scream and yell? He sat too much in the Oval Office and didn't didn't communicate. Okay. So there are certain things that I feel that, that he just right. really disappointed me. Jonathan. Okay, so we've had examples of what uh, we consider to be at that time impossible when they accomplished the victories they did in the abolitionist movement, the suffragist movement, the anti-Vietnam War movement, and the civil rights movement. We have social media now. Uh, the onus is really on us, the people, to stop being so lazy and get involved instead of pointing the fingers at each other and complaining. Okay. And I'd just like you to expand more on that concept. Well, I think I think we, we there's no excuse why we couldn't have better than Scandinavia higher choir level uh, is what yeah. I'm saying. Well, we would love it. The, the pre, and I, here's what I believe: if enough people got involved, enough people, and stood together, we'd get whatever we want. And that is the trick. So we are not there yet. We're getting there. Uh, you know, in five states, so the Republicans again have have laws that are going to make it illegal for us to protest. You know, this is what's coming down the pike from the Republicans. And uh, or the fascists is what I call them, uh, refusing to let us. So we can do it if we have enough people standing up and saying we're all together. We don't. That's what I was saying in the beginning. We don't fear each other. If we get this momentum, and again, that's why this group to me is so important that we all hang together and decide to work together at some level. Is there yeah. anybody here that hasn't had a question yet? <laughs> you just got here. Uh, Carl hasn't had a question. Carl? Yeah, I, well, yeah. I haven't uh, talked about the uh, Supreme Court, and, and I'm just wondering what your take on it is, and what, what can we possibly do? I mean, can, we can't possibly filibuster for four years. Right, and, and, so and you know, what, what bothers me is that Clinton never, Mrs. Clinton never talked about it. Democrats didn't talk about the Supreme Court, the importance of it enough, in my opinion. We could have won, I think there's certain things we could have won, or Clinton could have won the election. Uh, or even Bernie, but I mean, if we had talked about the importance of the Supreme Court, and they didn't, we are the, the gentleman that's up now is horrendous, and you know anybody they put in is going to be so extremely immediately overturned Law Bush versus Wade. We can't do a damn thing about it right now, from what I'm reading. We really can't. Um, I don't know about the filibuster I'm working. I don't think it's not. And we're weak. We can't, the Democrats give in to these people. There's only a few that are out there fighting and standing up and saying. Why don't we have all the Democrats just sitting on the floor of Congress and protesting? And they could do so much more. So that's my, my complaint. I'm worried about the Supreme Court. And then if what's-her-name dies or she's out, and we get two more ultra right-wing theocratic you know, appointments. So I'm very fearful. I'm fearful of my grandkids for this. This is horrible. It's terrible. So. Can I ask you a question, a direct question? When you say, based on my opinion, I hate that word. Okay. Opinion is like one million per penny, but can you uh, maybe in the future think about saying, based on my observation, that's have value. Opinion don't have any value. Not okay. Okay. I can consider that. Will you consider? It? I'll yeah. consider that. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Much. Yeah. What, what do you think of uh, sanctuary, sanctuary cities, and why do we have to support all these illegals and refugees? You know, I'm for the sanctuary cities. I, I really am. I, I think that we have to treat the immigrants strictly have been vetted and the people living here as human beings. I mean, just the way we want to be treated. Really, people don't realize that they're, I mean, the stories like in California, they go in with the Trump's people are going in, taking out, looking for one person. They're not there. They take the whole house and put them somewhere in, uh, you know, detention center. We don't even know where they're going. I, I think we have to protect them. These are our workers, as we, you know, these are the people who are doing the dirty jobs that people don't want to do. And I'm, I am really tired of the immigrants being accused of everything. But they kept sanctuary cities a, a secret. I, I don't know Chicago was a sanctuary. There's 300, I, I don't know. Well, no, that's, they're all advertised. No, I read a paper every day. I read six papers. There's at least 45 sanctuary cities that I heard about the other day. 300. 300 centuries. Great. I mean, I, you know, I'm just indifferent. I, I think it's great. I think we have, do you love humanity or you don't? You can't just have a, I, I love these people, but I don't love other people. I mean, I just, that's just not how I feel about it. You like Puerto Rican? Huh? 
I don't like Puerto Ricans, no. Okay, okay, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's get out of control. The lady in the right. Hope for you. You have a question right there. Ask your question. I just was um, wondering, is there any way we can help you with, I think it's a tremendous opportunity to get all these small groups where they can communicate and maybe come together and become stronger by becoming bigger and more powerful like the Tea Party use their organizational skills. I think it would be really kind of super awesome to use their organizational skills against their ilk. Well right and one of the things we are going to be doing and who mentioned Jim Hightower but we're going to plan we're planning an event uh, somewhere in the spring sometime in the spring out at O'Hare and we've done this before where we have you know, people like Ben Cohn of Ben and Jerry, who's very progressive, and will come. And he is great. He brings the free ice cream. And he does these events. He's terrific. And we're going to have all these organizations allowed to have table space. Not all, but whoever wants to sign up. And have table space so people can walk by and, and pick up literature or sign on. And we've done it before out at the airport because it's more convenient for people in this, in this you know, other parts of the state. I, could, I would love your help. So it's a question of which speakers we get. And then we'll have live music like we've done before, and have, you know, this way we're bringing more and more hundreds of people together. What is that? One expert one on getting the okay. media involved in I'm, our operations. There's somebody that will do that. Well, you know, I've been on WCPT with Wayne Besson, and uh, he did an event for me. Excuse me. A few weeks ago, that was a huge success. There you, you go. Were there, right? Yeah. yeah I thought that. Yeah, it was packed, and we're ready for another one. And so not only do we want with this group uh, to get everybody on the Internet and social media, by the way, back to that, social media is critical. Um, and I use it all the time. It's, it's critical. What is it? It's called United for Democracy Now. Well, we're, no, we're, we're still working. I have to get a speaker for it. Because we ask these people to do it for nothing, so we're sort of there, at their mercy. Pat gets the last question. Not to throw a damper on your goals, which are great, but how do you get uh, a field full of communists, anarchists, uh, disillusioned Republicans, uh, Democrats of various stripes, pacifists, uh, veterans? How do you get all those groups together to agree on lunch? much less anything else. Wouldn't it make more sense to pick two or three key hot button issues, like jobs, for example, like the loss of jobs uh, overseas, form uh, and, and, and it form around that. And when you got two or three issues that you can kind of call this and you have you know, no, almost like a phalanx where you're, 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 you're charging right into your opposition. Uh, doesn't that make more sense? Than it, it doesn't to me because I think we're beyond that. I think I, we have those groups. We have those groups. We have all of them. But if we're going to get ready for 2018, we have to coalesce around the big thing, which is the Koch brothers and Alec and the big, and the big issues of do we want fascism or not. And anybody who's against that kind of life can join or come or whatever, everybody's welcome. I, there, there's so many groups working on jobs, like you know, jobs for justice, working families. They're already out there, and we. I can't go back but to the they're small. All going in 60 well, we're directions. trying to say to them. We're trying to say to them, okay, this is great. Come to our meetings. Come to our stuff. Bring your stuff. Show us, and then we all have to agree we're going to fight the big fight, which is going to be a national fight, or we're not going to have anything left. In my opinion, it's my opinion. You know. All right, everybody, okay. give our speaker a hand. <laughs> How far? I think maybe four minutes or five. What do you think? Okay, uh, let's have a show of hands. Uh, attention, please. Who, uh, keep your hands up because we're going to count. And we're not going to run over that count. Uh, for who wants to give a rebuttal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and uh, Oh, four minutes. One over there, 12. Okay, we'll go four minutes apiece on the rebuttals. Everybody gets four minutes for a rebuttal. And we will time it. All right, so uh, we'll start the rebuttals uh, soon. All right, I'm ready. Okay.
Tim's first. Here we go again. We're trying to blame each other for America's loss of credibility. Personally, I like the prescription given in the book by uh, Thomas Friedman and Michael Mendelbaum. You have to remember that after World War II, we were the only game in town. And that's why we had such good economic prosperity. All that's ha what's happening now is the world is starting to level out and we are starting to have to compete against other countries. We misread the Cold War, kind of said to ourselves, hey, you know, we're the biggest game in town so we don't have to do anything anymore. We took a bad course after 9-11 when our, uh, we started focusing on the losers of globalization instead of imitating the winners. And I think we badly underestimated the impact of technological change that our country's good. And here's the biggest one. The generational change from the greatest generation who believed in thrift and sustainable values to the baby boomers who use sub -edge situational values to borrow and spend instead of save. We didn't really start having all this stuff with layoffs and it's corporate for sustainability until the baby boomers started taking over these corporations. Now, how do we get back to this? There's four things that make America, according to Thomas Friedman and myself, that have made America really great and what we need to do. First off is education. From the cotton gin to the superconductor, America educated its citizens up to the level of the most modern technology of its time. Therefore, we're going to have to invest in schools. We're going to have to have the world's best infrastructure. And that simply means we've got to invest in roads, bridges, railroads, upgrading, perhaps, perhaps even trains. The right mix of regulations to where they're not overly burdensome, but they help people out. And of course, government research sponsored research and development. You know, it's the universities, the uh, other government-sponsored organizations that bring the technology to us. For example, the internet was first created and sustained by DARPA, and it basically, after a while, was commercialized in 19, I think, 92. And ever since then, we have been booming with the internet and the impact of technological change. And I think the biggest thing we're going to have to do is get our energy an environmental situation right. Climate change is real. I think though that renewables aren't going to cut it. We will need some form of nuclear to help sustain us. Not the type we have now, but some, some sustainable stuff. I'll talk about that in a few weeks when I debate uh, Dennis Nelson. However, the last bit that we need to do is this. We need to welcome our immigrants. We need to understand that we live in a globalized world. And if we choose to sustain and withdraw from the world, there's another competitor out there. It's called China. Do you guys know about the One Belt, One Road initiative that China's doing? No. And if you haven't, shame on you, because what they're doing, like in the countries of Kazakhstan, is they give aid, no strings attached. They just buy the infrastructure, get the roads built, and later on, they come in and they start trading. About a year ago, something incredible happened. And that was a boxcar of laptops was taken by train from Shenzhen, China, all the way to Spain. And it did it in less than a week. No. That, yes, Charlie, that's exactly what happened. And what you need to understand is that America's not the big boy on the block anymore. We need to revitalize ourselves. We need to get back to those values that made us great. I'm not talking about the Trump style things. I'm talking about we need to get back to work. We need to understand that the traditional value of hard work, saving, uh, okay, give me one getting a better day going is exactly what's been built in America. We've forgotten it, and I think if we get back to it again, we can really sustain our 
This is self into the future. Thank you very much. And and uh, water. Yeah, I gotta do my short spice Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> 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 American Apologies American. is not accepted. Hello, can we come to order so we have a <laughs> short spice Short spice is a chance. Hey, um, I was sharing, she did a very nice job, she's very in tune, more than most, most of the left and right wing media is more in tune with a lot of the topics, so it was very good uh, information. Uh, I would have liked for you to, now, I can't figure this out too well, I, now, Trump went out and signed like dozens and dozens of orders, but doesn't the, can you speak to that when you get back up here? Um, uh, that's not laws, right? It doesn't have to be debated in Congress and voted on. And, uh, you know, I mean, want to be sued, want to be like backlogged, want to be, you know, it's a, you know, it's symbolic. But could, if you could please explain that more, because I don't know my, um, I don't know my, uh, you know, pr uh, parliamentary stuff as much, much as I should. It's a regulation based on law. Well. So maybe somebody can explain what these That's stupid true. orders are, sure. and if they if they you know uh, stick, or do they have to uh, go through the legal system? Laws. We're a, we're a country of laws. Nobody's remembering that. <laughs> anyway, um, you know I kind of like a few things Trump's doing. I thought Trump was just um, you know deporting like criminals with you know like bad hombres. So I kind of like that. I kind of like that he's shaming uh, com companies that go to, um, you know, basically move their operations to other country. I'm not a globalist anymore. That was the hot thing. But I, I really think these Wall Street companies are screwing workers. They go, and I said, you know, Trump's kind of been quiet on that about, you know, sending jobs overseas and then, uh, then. And then uh, we're importing and buying crap from these people that are in slave labor situations and, and don't pay attention to the environment. Can I have some water, please? So, and then I like the effect that, that Trump is out of the political scene, uh, which is a good idea. Maybe we'll have Bruce Springsteen as a president someday or somebody else. Because God knows uh, Hillary and the Clintons and a lot of the Democrats are just trash. They're, they're all they're interested in is their stupid New York and Washington bubble. You know, Hillary doesn't drag her ass up to Wisconsin and Michigan. She deserves those. When she shows up at a gangster rap concert the night before the election, she deserves the rules. How out of touch could the Democrats be? So, um, yeah, so, you know, there's, there's a plenty of blame. Um, I think Trump's uh, climate is going up the wrong tree when he, when he, when he tr tries to trash environment and the poor people and, and pushes big oil on us. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I, just, I just think that he's too cool. As, he's a great TV personality. He really has, you know, grabbed, the, you know, the, a third of the country's attention, and they love him to death. But um, he's a great personality. Um, the media loves him, and did, and uh, corporate media. It's the last point I want to make. The media has changed so much in this country, Sharon. You got right-wing radio, which is so much more popular than Fox News. It's, it's dynamic, it goes with everybody, it like follows them around. Fox News, you gotta pop your ass down and watch TV. Right wing radio is so strong, it's been so strong for decades. Reagan put that in, he put, he put he got rid of the fairness doctrine that eliminated free speech, and, he got, and Reagan also got rid of the fact that you cannot have monopolies in the media. So there's tons of monopolies in the media. The media cannot be trusted. Okay, next. And I'm not talking about the media not being trusted. Your time is the way up. Trump talks about it. I'm talking about the way that it's and involved. your time and is up. Good talk. Thank you. Hey, oh boy. Jeez, you guys get to talk all you want. <laughs> it was four minutes. I almost didn't get to my media stuff. <laughs> all right, Jonathan. Four minutes.
he had a computer. It was a bright, cold day in April, and the, and the clocks, clocks were striking, were striking 13. 13. Uh, there's no excuse in this country. The onus is on we the people. Whether you voted or not, and I think there are some important things said about whether you have the right to complain or not. Uh, whether we realize or not, that's part of the divide and conquer strategy. 95 million people didn't vote because the choices that they wanted to be in the debates, not just on the ballots, were suppressed by both the two major parties. That's not a democracy. And if you ask people from the Scandinavian countries and several other countries in the industrialized world, they say, how much more proof do they need in the country where we cannot afford for them not to be great, not to lead by the true definition of the word greatness, by the true definition of the word leadership? You know, after all these lifetimes, all these generations, all these years, all this work, all this rework, all this money spent, all the money spent again, all the sacrifice, dedication, the faith we had sticking together through thick and thin, the good and the bad, you know, why isn't the USA a democracy yet? We're all asking that. We're all feeling that. We're all thinking that in our different ways from our different ideologies, our different political persuasions. So there's a unity there amongst us being human beings who know something is very wrong. So we can't be pitted against each other because they can never divide us from each other because we care about each and every one of each other's families having a high quality of life. No matter what in the minutia we disagree on, we want us all to prosper. I want your life to be great. I want your life to be great by your definition. Not some idiot, oligarch, uh, spoiled brat, billionaire, hedge fund manager, serial misogynist definition. Not some r religious fundamentalist wing nut, anti-women rights Mike Pence vice president's definition. By the people's definition. So that should be the first question every journalist asks political candidates is debate. Why is this country not a democracy? Do we not have the money? Wrong. Did we not have the time? Wrong. Do we not have the people speaking up and popular people's struggles? Wrong. We have a long history of that. There's a small group of people in this country who have a visceral contempt for participatory democracy. So uh, this poem is for them. When the TVs are full of sheep, remember to see it as an opportunity for we the people, we, to choose to go against the grain. No mind what they say, they erase the space they waste, smoke and mirrors in gold frames, bread and circuses take center stage. We've heard it before, slogans hail, card-carrying clan of pay to play, end all strategy, the flag they wave, Arbeid macht frei, the name of their state. Trojan drones flown through the pearly gates, and still we choose to say we go against the grain. This is, this is a quote. I got uh, 40 seconds left, and I'm going to keep it on within the rules. So, this is a quote by Dr. Cornell West. He's a professor, author, historian, and activist. Those, those of y'all who know him are very grateful in this time of mass confusion by corporate airwaves, and he's shined great clarity on these issues. Commit oneself to the highest level of courage. Don't be afraid to tell the truth. Bear witness. Don't be afraid to be unpopular. Be humble enough to learn from each other and others of all colors, and bold enough to pierce through all the lies and crimes being committed in the name of democracy and liberty. Know your history and keep the love flow. Uh, there's one article that I strongly suggest. It's by Chris Hedges from October 16, 2016. It's called Donald Trump, the dress rehearsal from fascism. It's truthdig.com. Thank you to the speaker today for being here to tell us all we need to get involved. <laughs> Okay. Amen, gentlemen. What do you call an agenda of lying, bullying, sexism, racism, and restricting free speech? I call it obstruction of justice. Okay? Call that? Alright, here's some satire. Uh, I kind of made this up. Uh, here we have a map of what would be kind of awesome. Uh, uh, now, I, I made this up here. I added that. But there is a group in California that actually 
passed a petition around to have California, Oregon, and Washington secede and join Canada. Of course, it's not going to happen uh, without a fight, you know. Um, so I just kind of like uh, added my satire to this. We should keep North Dakota because for the sake of Standing Rock. Uh, and from Illinois, we, we, I cut Indiana and Ohio in half here uh, with Route 30 all the way up to, to, to include Detroit. And of course, New York. New York should be with us. Maine is kind of questionable. But uh, yeah, it's just satire, but uh, I would vote for this in a heartbeat if I had the chance. However, there's something else we could do if that wouldn't work. Of course, it wouldn't work. Is uh, to resist Trump. Okay? Resist Trump. Resist Pence. Resist Bannon. Okay? Uh, tomorrow, gather at 12 noon, Wacker and Wabash, 1 p.m., march to Federal Plaza and resist Trump. So I hope I see all of you there tomorrow. That's all. Raj. Uh, my name is Raj Patel. I think Ellison is a bad idea because he's a nice guy, but optics are bad. And and uh, I don't think he should be Democratic Party chairman. I disagree with uh, with uh, all these things he said here because it's not taking us to tomorrow. I, if I have my say, I like to have a complete over of education, and you, you get promoted by what you know, and what you should know by graduating, and not by a class or year. If some smart guy is there, and, and he knows enough that uh, MBA guy can know, then he give him MBA degree. Okay, and, I decide, and second thing, I like to change the system of marriage. I think our system of marriage sucks. Marriages are for raising children. It is, it is falsely promoted that it is for love. Because what is happening is that love is, for, love is temporary, it's for falls apart. Lots of love doesn't, doesn't stand the situ crisis and children suffer. And we have big problem with children. So we should have a law which says that uh, Individual, both men and women, who create a baby, they are liable for children, their child's welfare, irregardless of whatever else is there. And a sex, sex has changed. People experiment, people grow up, people do different things, they are the sex. And sex and marriage is not the same thing, but uh, marriage is a responsibility. If you, take a, if you are willing to take a responsibility of each other, <coughs> And whatever you do and whatever comes in going forward, then you get married. It should be contractual. It's just like a pre prenuptial marriage. Because these are the real, real thing. We are going to change your life. And the second thing I'm saying, don't listen to all these things. Don't participate in the political activity. Go worry about how to get rich, how to better your job, how to better your life, how to better your career, how to take care of your kids, and how to train them right. You know, it's not happening. I, uh, last last summer, oh, I talked to 50 young people on Lake Lake, on a, on my lake shore, in a park. And uh, do you know something? Lots of parents are not doing good job. I ask kid after kid after kid, and they say they don't have no communication with their parents. They did not participate in their growth. And uh, when, when asked for questions about this, they confront the issue, then they talk, they reply what they knew 30, 40, 50 years ago is go and get married and have a baby and get a job. Okay? That's not enough. Okay? So, so let, let, let us start thinking. And technology is there. Technology is going to change everything. They're talking about colony on a Mars. And we are talking about organizing micro organization here and there and there. It's not going to work. You know, look at what can be there. Bill Clinton got elected on his own. His personality is articulated in his body. Barack Obama got elected on his personality, his articulation, and his speech. Okay? Trump got elected by just judging of some people that, hey, he can do it. He at least made, you, made lots of enough people believe it that he can do it. And second thing Trump did it. Hillary Clinton was going and talking to all the wrong people. Trump was going and talking to people which his son-in-law came out with a strategy of electoral vote. Go for electoral vote. 
don't go for people. Okay? You need a strategy to win. You need a technology to win. Okay? If you cannot do it, it's too bad. Thank you. All right. Four minutes. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Four minutes. Four minutes. I'm Dan Bader, and a few weeks ago, I made a plea to President Trump to pay attention to exponential global warming. And I'm sure he tunes in to this occasionally. <laughs> but today I want to, and Sharon, thank you for the uh, presentation. And, and I'll say this to the progressives. The progressives need to tune in to exponential global warming. It started a few years ago, actually, and it's really taken off. And on Russia Today, which is kind of close to mainstream media uh, here in the United States, it's on cable news, they actually had a little piece talking about exponential global warming, which comes with the information that a lot of climate scientists, if something is not done right away, uh, we all could be extinct by 2026. That's not very far from now, and it won't be pleasant getting there. This weather we're having in February is really great. I love it, and it's going to go on for a while. But uh, it, it is kind of probably, it's probably a manifestation. Uh, uh, the Arctic is heating up like you cannot believe. I would recommend that all progressives check out the Arctic News website. Uh, it's got excellent data and information, and many well-known scientists contribute to it. This information is being censored big time, but it's starting to leak out. And uh, what I said the last time when I was talking to Trump was this. If you are a young person, if you are in your teens, 20s or 30s, you can follow this data. You can see maybe we're at 1.5 Celsius above baseline right now, and we're going to go up 0.20 to maybe 0.50 this year. That's exponential. Baseline was 1750. And you can watch that, and if you see it taking off and nothing is being done, you might want to hold off getting pregnant and having a family. You can wait a few years right now to see what happens. And uh, I think it's important that progressives really start to tune into this because ultimately Trump and all the rest of them uh, are going to have to face it. And the fact that it's starting to leak out in the mainstream news tells you, you know, time is very short. Okay, thanks. Okay. So much to talk about, and Sharon, if that's it, thank you for your talk. It was great. Uh, decades ago and decades, there was a fellow who said, um, I don't belong to any organized political organization. I'm a Democrat. Okay. Will Rogers. Will Rogers, thank you. Um, I don't know why so many people are, but no, I do know why. People who are like over 40, 50, 60 are just so into the media and Trump proved that the media is, is like old 20th century, 21st century. This man ran away with it. He destroyed the Bush and Clinton dynasties <coughs> without using the media. He saved a ton of money, okay? And somehow people are like still fixated on the media, the media. It's like, why are you so 20th century? Um, the thing about the, the people who hurt, they're, liter they're people who are literally dying. And like some of the causes of their health, and it's sugar, it's like soft drinks, it's like a bad diet, lack of exercise, and all of these things they want to be rescued from. But they can only be rescued, you know, corporate is trying to sell them sodas and, and other things, but, and it's killing them. And they, it's, you know, you know yourself how it is. 
you know, a nice kick of sugar once in a while, a good piece of steak, it's like, oh my god. Um, but it's killing them, it's and they just want to be rescued. And there's no one going to rescue them. They have to rescue themselves. It's like, mm -hmm. and the other thing was, like, <laughs> my mom, she was a seamstress while I was growing up and a kid. And then, that, that job in North America disappeared, okay? And it's like, it went overseas, and like, why did it go overseas? Yeah, on one side of the coin, it was, it was corporate and corporate profits. Driving corporate, corporate profits was the fact that Ma and Pa America, or middle class, or you know, the Midwest, or whatever you want to call it, was going to Walmart and buying shirts for $17 instead of going to like Marshall Fields and buying them for 35 And that's the thing that's killing us all. There was a song put out long, not long, like a couple of years ago. And the chorus line was, it was a steep price to pay to save a dollar today. And that's the, that's the human condition. That's where we're at. How much time do I have? About a uh, minute. minute. Okay. So, the human condition. Okay. It didn't occur to me until very recently. 12,000 years ago was the last ice age. And if you live in North America and you think of the last ice age and you see how the ice comes down from Canada and touches down here and touches so far, you don't think much of it because there's nothing there even today. It's all empty forest and, you know, Canadian, a few Canadians. But the same thing happened in Europe. In Europe, 12,000 years ago, the ice covered like basically the Hadrian Line uh, across the British, the, you know, the North Sea, all of North Scandinavia was covered, Denmark, northern um, Germany, and, it, and then in the high elevations of Switzerland and stuff, that was all covered, and in the Pyrenees and France and Spain, that was all. So 12,000 years ago, Europe, as we know it, didn't exist. And then the ice began to melt, which took a couple thousand years. And then Europe, and then the forests came back, and then the Europeans moved in, and now all of a sudden, human nature, people are like, hey, I'm Scandinavian, I'm German, we've always been that way. No. Okay, time. Dennis Nelson, four minutes. Uh, my name is Dennis Nelson. I'd like to thank Sharon for her important presentation. On Friday, uh, January 20th of this year, Inauguration Day, I received a dynamite message from Ronnie Cummins, International Director, Organic Consumers Association, which is the basis of my rebuttal. I am on the forefront of the proactive, progressive, and truly populist movement to counter the Donald Trump administration and the Koch brothers. <coughs> Two platforms have been developed by the Organic Consumers Association that will guide our work beginning immediately. Consumer Revolution 2017 to 2020, overarching goal. Force corporations that sell consumer products, food, clothing, drugs, and personal care products to respond to consumer demand for truthfully labeled products that have a positive impact on human health and are produced using regenerative processes and practices that not only harm, prevent harm to human health and the environment, but also measurably improve soils and combat climate disruption. Number one, move toward making organic, 100% grass-fed and regenerative food and farming the norm, not just the 5% alternative in the marketplace, by doubling sales of organic to $80 billion by 2020, and by increasing sales of U.S. grass-fed meat and dairy and organic and pastured poultry and pork to at least 400% by 2020. Number two, achieve a 50% reduction in sales of genetically modified organism, GMO food and animal feed by 2020 with the aim of driving GMO animal feed off the market. Number three, force major food brands and companies that fraudulently label their products as natural, organic, or GMO free to remove misleading labels and or transition their products and production methods to organic and or regenerative practices. Number four, 
increase market share for clothing made from organic cotton, wool, and other natural fibers through a high-profile Care What You Wear campaign that encourages consumers to boycott GMO cotton and synthetic fibers. Political Revolution 2017 to 2020. Overarching goal. Reform the current political process to create a democracy that works for all people, not just wealthy corporations of the 1%, by uniting the food, climate, economic and social justice, natural health and peace movements in a coordinated effort to support candidates, elected public officials and policies at the local, state and federal levels that support our common goals. Number one, support the candidates and elected officials endorsed by the post Bernie Sanders movements, including Brave New Congress and Our Revolution. Number two, lobby candidates and elected public officials to support the Organic Consumers Association's Consumer Revolution Platform, which I covered. Number three, lobby candidates and elected public officials to support the Our Revolution Platform, with the addition of, on climate, a focus on regenerative agriculture and soil carbon sequestration as a climate disruption solution in addition to fossil fuel emissions reduction and renewable energy. On health care, a focus on Medicare for all that includes coverage for preventative, natural, and alternative health care solutions. On living wage, a focus on raising the minimum wage to $15 per hour so that lower income Americans can afford organic food. Number four, Organize local grassroots meetups and coalitions to run candidates for local and state offices who support our issues. Number five, oppose any candidates or policies that promote racism, sexism, homophobia, militarism, and all forms of discrimination whenever and wherever they arise. Number six, oppose any laws or illegal attempts to disenfranchise voters. Number seven, combat climate chaos by promoting candidates and policies that advance regenerative food, farming, and land use in addition to fossil fuel emissions reduction and renewable energy as solutions for achieving zero emissions for reversing climate disruption by sequestering excess carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in soil and forests and for addressing our public health, water, and other environmental crises. That's it, and thank you very much. Good job, Dennis. Make America great again. Yeah. That guy's awesome. Is that a rebuttal? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Why you think it was great and, and what made it great and how it's not great. First of all, I would like to thank Sharon. I would like to thank Sharon for the fine job that she did. Uh, next, with regard to the gentleman who has already left and who was spouting all that conservative rhetoric that we heard earlier. Which one? He was sitting next to Wes. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I would, would have reminded him if he were still here that Hillary won a majority of the uh, popular vote. It was only in the Electoral College that she lost. Oh, that was because all those... those oh, that's I, I, it's not your turn. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm, sorry. Sorry. I'm just joking. Okay, so that's number, number two. I'm just joking. Darn. I'm sorry. I remain a supporter of sanctuary cities. It's no different from when in the 1850s they hid fugitive slaves here who otherwise would have been shipped south under the terms of the Fugitive Slave Act. Hold on, this is the same right, goddamn right. thing. And um, with regard, however, to the comment that was made about Bernie Sanders, I, dis I split the Bernie Sanders movement into two, people, two groups of people. The first were the good people who, regardless of who they voted for in the primary, voted for Hillary in the general election. And that's fine. Who they voted for in the primary is their business. The others are the Bernie or bust people. Uh -huh. And with regard to them, I will say this. Now, granted, Hillary's loss in the election was partly her fault. She and the Democrats took too much for granted. And having said that, the Bernie or bust people, they didn't help matters either. They instead, they either decided to stay home, or they voted for a third party candidate, or in some cases, they voted for Trump. Well, 
do they like what they got instead of Hillary better? Um, let's use global warming, which was talked about earlier. My friends, Hillary represented the last chance to do something about global warming. Sure it was. By the time we can get another Democrat in there in, in 2020, if that's possible at all, it's going to be too late to do something about global warming. The most that we can do is try to mitigate it. Uh, I think at this point we have lost the chance to try and stop it. And my message to these millennials who, who, uh, who um, said not to back Hillary and threw away our last chance to stop global warming is simply this. Which one's yours? That, now, let's figure that, I'm going to be 63 next month. And let's figure that I'm going to live the rest of a normal lifespan, and that means right. I've got about another 20 years left, 20, 25 oh. years left. All right, I'm obviously going to live long enough to see some of what happens with global warming, but most of the effects of global warming will not be seen by me. They will seem be seen by those who are younger than I am. These very same millennials who decided not to back Hillary Clinton last fall. Oh. Well, my attitude towards them at this point is, this is now your problem. You deal with it. Thank you. All right. Uh, someone said earlier that uh, Donald Trump did not really use the media <laughs> to get across his message. Oh, how the hell do you think most people heard and read what he had to say? Now, some people may have edited, may have edited uh, for you know the nearest uh, restroom in order to vomit, but the fact of the matter is, we have all right. How did Trump win? Why did he win? Because he was saying things that were touching a nerve with an awful lot of Americans who, especially in the last 15 years, felt that, uh, that they had been ignored, especially by the Democratic Party. The party of Franklin Roosevelt, the party of Lyndon Johnson, the party that was supposed to stand for strong union unions, the party that was supposed to stand for American goods manufactured in this country for Americans, that had gone by the wayside. These treaties that have taken place in the last few years could not have happened without the collusion of prominent Democrats, including a former president of the United States. Hello. From Chicago, you know who he is. Hello. Truth of the matter is, we don't realize that when when Donald Trump was talking about how he was going to stop jobs from leaving the United States, we don't realize that he himself contributed mightily to that trend. When he talked about how he was going to give the workers a square deal, we don't talk about how he screwed over, literally sometimes, figuratively other times, his own workers. The truth of the matter is that a lot of this happened because people were disillusioned. They were looking for someone, anyone, who was going to touch on what their needs were. This is very similar to another guy, an out of work paper hanger from Austria, who managed to uh, slip into Germany as an illegal alien, incidentally, and managed to convince enough people to vote him in as chancellor. He was saying all of the things that people thought they wanted to hear. And people weren't paying attention to some of the other things, the darker things, that if they had bothered to read one of his books, Mein Kampf, which I warn you if you haven't read it, is a profoundly boring book. But it should be read by anyone concerned uh, with watching out for a seemingly attractive tyranny a lot of the things that Donald Trump had done to get himself elected 
were, could have been taken out of the Fuhrer's own playbook. Right. Except for the fact that the Fuhrer did it better because he knew what he was going to do and how to do it, which I don't think Donald Trump really realizes what he's going to do next. And to those who say, this is such a mucky situation, this is so dirty, I am not going to soil my delicate soul with having to deal with something as nasty as politics, yeah. then you get exactly what you deserve. Yeah. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, virginity, political virginity, has to be sacrificed in the name of practicality. So, for those who refuse, I have just been told that I my time is up, and uh, we'll talk about this later. All right. All right. All right. First of all, I would like to first of all, I'd like to thank Sharon Sanders for coming in and speaking here tonight. I've known Sharon Sanders for a number of years, and she has she has campaigned she has campaigned for a long time for many progressive causes. Um, you were with the what tenth district Democrats? Uh, the uh, she she supported the Progressive Democrats of America, and now this. And I tell you, and and um, now this is and this is really the fight of our lives here because um, uh, I've been, of course, the moderator uh, at the College of Complexes a number of times, and I try to be fair, but I suppose most of you probably know that I am not pro Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, That's now, not uh, news. Yeah, it's it's uh, now. Uh, to you know, I was going to talk about how the media promoted um, how the media promoted Trump, but actually Pat Butler already covered that topic, so you kind of you're a tough act to follow, Pat. Oh. Anyway, um, I will say that um, uh, Dave, I wouldn't be too harsh on millennials because I know millennials who voted for Hillary Clinton and, and campaigned very hard for her. Uh, most of the people, when I, when I campaigned for Hillary Clinton last year, most of the people that I was working with were, uh, were what you would probably call millennials, people that were people that didn't become adults until the 21st century. And on the other hand, I know a lot of older people who were burning your bust. So um, now I wanted to say this on the subject of you know the Hillary supporters versus the burning your bust people. Now, I, just so you all know where I stand, I supported Bernie Sanders in the primaries, although I think I probably didn't do enough for him. And then I um, pulled out all, I did everything I could to get Hillary elected in the general election. Not that it made any difference. And, uh, but I think that, and I've talked to Sharon about this before, whoever you voted for last year, even if you voted for Trump, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is, where do you stand now? Okay, we need to put the past behind us, and we need to look forward. You know, I. I and I said before at, at a meeting that, that Sharon Sanders organized that it doesn't matter whether you're it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or a Green or an Independent or, or a Communist or, or a Republican. As long as you oppose Trump and you oppose fascism, then you know, then you you are welcome with us. Now, second thing, I um, of course here at the College of Complex is everybody is welcome, including Trump supporters. You, you like us commies? No, I would I would work with communists. You know that, Charlie. That's right, comrade. All right. All right. Now. All right, comrade. Now, now, I just want to say one other thing. <laughs> somebody, somebody said. I think it was Mike Lehman who said he's not here now. He said that that Donald Trump is only deporting the bad hombres among the undocumented immigrants. That's not exactly true. You see, Trump and and the vice president, uh, Mike Pence, classify all undocumented immigrants as criminals. In fact, their preferred term for undocumented immigrants is criminal alien. And, uh, and they aim to deport all of them, uh, including the children brought in by their parents. Now, uh, the, the mat however, there are some groups that they're not really paying any attention to. I haven't heard about any mass arrests occurring in the Polish neighborhoods here in Chicago. <laughs> it's, it's all, all there's it's even it's it's all happening. It's it's all it's focused entirely on Hispanic immigrants, and um, so this is this is pretty much so 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 these mass deportations have a racial element. They're aimed at Hispanic people. Now, um, so this guy. How much time do I have, Tim? Seconds. Fifteen seconds. All right. Well, that's really all I have to say. All right. Four minutes.
going on? I'm more prepared now. I got a little guy over there. Four minutes. All right, four uh, minutes. Get cooking. Now that we're talking about politics, I I don't like politi politicians at all. They're a bunch of liars and everything else. Uh, but we as American people, like uh, somebody uh, said that we the Puerto Rican people, we also American, but we never welcome in the United States, especially the Puerto Rican from New York. They're being destroyed there. When a Puerto Rican moved to New York and stayed there more than 30 years when he came back to Puerto Rico, they call it New York Rican. So we cannot stand those Puerto Ricans. Me as a Puerto Rican, the other Puerto Rican not stand it. They, their mind is changed. They stay over there because there was a better job in New York. And the, uh, I only complain the owner of those factories that destroyed the mind of my Puerto Rican people. Okay, but now we have to make another conscience. It's happening in Chicago. It's a holocaust against black people. Uh, I live pretty well in Elmwood Park, you know, I tell you, in this area. Uh, don't have. Don't now, know. it's a holocaust I get a against my people in Puerto Rico. There's a thousand Puerto Rican uh, dying in Puerto Rico a year. Uh, my, the Puerto Ricans, are, they are ignorant. They say, well, they look for it because they're on drug, they're selling drugs. That's not right. Okay, let's, let's move on another because I got a guy over here. Thank you, uh, Miss, because you really uh, you really know what you're doing. Uh, I got something for you at the end. Uh, and Miss, you should concentrate in one subject, in humanity, because people are dying at the age of 70, 80, and 90. So not to be too diverse, not to tackle so many, so many subjects at the same time. Tackle the most important one. You should, because we are dying at that age. Uh, I just turned 70 uh, last year, and I'm going to be 71 now. So, uh, first time, thank to Trump. I got to thank Trump. Some people accuse me that that I am for Trump. I am not for nobody. I am for good thing. I'm against abortion. Trump is against abortion. I'm against those. That was that was violating the the Constitution. Having those jet cats. I'm sorry. These people at the Congress, as a lobby, are trying to buy senators. That's not democracy. That's, that's more than communist or worse. I, I don't know how you call it. You can call it, there's a name for it. So I'm against that. He already signed a paper saying we don't want no more lobbies in that. Well, a few things I like from him, I even my grandchild, uh, told me, Grandpa, you let us down because you vote for Trump. I don't vote for Trump. I'm for the good thing. Okay, I hope Trump tackle my Puerto Rican government, because they're, they're all druggies. I call it narco -politi politicos in Puerto Rico. I write a lot about that. I hope Trump tackle my country in a good way. I hope you don't discriminate against my people. Then we be in worse shape than what we are now. Okay. Uh, well, well, I'm against, even I own about 12,000 bucks, but I'm against books. When some speaker over here wants to recommend a book, that's like a forcing me. If books are no good, books are the ones that got us separated. They're conscious uh, opinion. A, 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 a typical book is the one that starts with some truth to attract you and they end up with a lot of lies. So that's a typical book. So. Please, uh, whenever you can, don't don't recommend book. No books. Oh, I'm I'm done. Yes, time. My hand. Your time. You got yes. four minutes. Yeah, it's books. Uh, okay. All right, books. All right, books. Problem. Thank you. We got a couple people left. That's it. Oh my goodness, it went fast, man. Hey, thanks, Sharon, for being fast. here and for all the work that she's doing and has done on behalf of humanity. And uh, I uh, hope that. Uh, How you doing? that uh, we will come together because of the challenge we face. Uh, uh, Jonathan broke the ice uh, earlier. He read a poem. I'd like to read a poem tonight, uh, which uh, uh, deals with the challenge ahead of us and the struggle. And I um, would like you to remember that it's calling upon our patriotic past. And uh, it is by a poem that wishes to remain, a poet who wishes to remain anonymous. And uh, uh, just uh, 
wrote this back in December when the, uh, when the danger was clear and it's even clearer now. Uh, <clears throat> in the course of human events it is clear, often a present danger will appear. And when that danger is obviously massive, it's imperative true patriots not be passive. Could this be the end of the American dream? Is it all hopeless and we should just scream? Whether wither America, surely not. To wither on the vine? It needs true patriots to grow a stiff spine, return to health or wither like a spent flower in the face of an illegitimate power. We need to stand up against the danger to spring, tall in opposition to the deadly wasp sting. To do less will negate our nation's posterity and allow our great history to end in ignominy. Get used to the fact that it can happen here. Get psyched to defend the freedoms we hold dear. All the good people must unite to do good and uh, counter the foul deeds that the evil ones would. Defend the ideals of the Statue of Liberty. Be true to the demands of this time of history. Rage, rage against the quenching of her fire, the plan of those villains with greedy desire. To go up against those right-wing zealots, we need some convergence of real patriots. Call out these scoundrels who've ignobly lied. Do not allow the truth to be denied. Blast the false mass media equivalents. Never let yourself descend to ambivalence. All who value freedom, who remain alive, must band together that the Republic survive. Do not let your mindset be in denial. The spirit of 76 needs a revival. The answer should not be a mystery. We must just ask WWJD. Oh, American spirit, what would Jefferson do? It's the patriot question, and it is our cue. For all our founders never would give in to would-be despots with a fraudulent win. Fight against the damage that scoundrels would cause. Stop any attempt to pass harmful laws. Anti-environment actions we must divert. Mitigate the efforts of the autocrats to hurt. Protect our lakes and rivers, our mountain majesties, against the coming ecological travesties. Prevent the oppression of a fascist regime. Get in the way of what the plutocrats deem. Spirits of Washington, Madison, Jefferson, will use your inspiration against the tweeting one. You'll inspire us in this dire time to rise against the evil plans all good people must despise. Even if we must defeat each lying tweet, like a horde of insects, down they must be beat. It's imperative now to save the Republic from a fate intended that would be tragic. They may send the army, they may send the police, we will stand up for justice, and we will not cease. Remember the spirit of 76. Resist with true metal the fascistic tricks. We will not despair. We will in hope invest and steal ourselves for the next four years' test. With marches, with speeches, whatever it takes to form a movement that full impact makes. Remember the legacy of Martin Luther King. To democracy in time, more security will bring. That prevalent spirit of MLK still knows the arc of history toward justice still goes. Not as timely as we would all hope, but humanity in all its grandiose scope has the strength as we do fully extend our efforts to make that justice arc bend. And just in conclusion, I'd like to say I was on a march last weekend and uh, on Devon Avenue, and I was very happy that we were saying, um, with respect to uh, Pastor Niemöller, who we, some of you might look up the quotes um, of uh, when the Nazis uh, were taking over uh, Germany, uh, we said, uh, they came for the immigrants first, and we said, hell no. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, Charlie, you're going to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, let's get Andy out of the way. All right, Andy. you got to write four-minute poems. <laughs> yeah. All right, whenever you're ready, Andy. Okay. A little over. <laughs> Again, I'd like to thank Sharon for a really good presentation. Give her a hand. Um, I've given some speeches here uh, on blacked out news, things that reporters can get fired for writing about. And almost invariably, uh, during one of those talks, somebody from the audience will say, well, if Andy, what you're telling us is true, it would presuppose some of our politicians have been lying to us. <laughs> Hello? 
uh, I coach seventh and eighth graders in, in Science Olympiad. We teach young people start with basic facts. Go back to square one if you're working on a problem. If you if you get lost somewhere on down the line, start back at square one. Well, here's some square one facts that I would suggest that people start with. Number one. I think Trump, the Trump installation was a huge wake-up call for Americans. The climate scientists have been saying we need a wake-up call. We can't fire around for another eight or ten years with uh, eight years of Hillary and then another eight years of bullshit. But we got one to four years. One on the pessimistic side, four years with the optimistic client scientists saying if we don't get a World War II-like mobilization going in that time frame, one to four years, then Manhattan's likely going to be underwater 30 feet in this century. Number two, the Trump installation was orchestrated by the billionaire-owned mainstream media. They put him in office uh, with billions of dollars with the free advertising. This is how you got 20 million people, or what I call the couch potatoes that watch Rush Limbaugh or listen to him. They rise up off the couch, the zombie voters, and head to the polls. It looks like the night of the living dead. Those people will vote for anything that Rush puts out, or the major media. And, you know, they're hardworking, decent Americans that are living in a complete bubble of mythology and ignorance. That's the job of the mainstream media with Rush right-wing radio is to maintain people in a bubble. Number three, <coughs> Trump is number one in that he is not the legally elected president. Uh, he lost, you have to understand, Trump lost this election. He lost a popular vote by millions that were counted and more millions that weren't counted. And then they changed the electoral, to electoral votes in the states that were needed to be changed <coughs> to put him in. Um, Trump is singularly qualified singularly unqualified to do anything but sign the corporate, ALEC-driven, anti-Christ agenda. They, Grover Norquist said, we need a Republican with enough digit control to move a pen to sign our legislation. We don't need a Republican president with a brain or a conscience or anything else. We just need somebody with their seal of approval on it, and that's how they're using Trump. What do we got? Uh, I'd like to list I stay uh, educated, updated on the latest of what's happening. Uh, looking at the first thing I look at in the morning is a website called Common Dreams. CommonDreams.org, that's Bill Moyer's favorite site, and it's linked to hundreds of other sites all over the planet. Number two, learn about Greg Palast. If you don't know who Greg Palast is, log on to GregPalast.com and get his books. He's got a DVD out, and he's got the movie The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. It's fantastic. Uh, Project Censored has a website, a book that comes out every year on the top 25 <coughs> black out subjects, projectcensored.org. There's uh, Amy, uh, Abby Martin on RT. Abby Martin, uh, she has a website called The Empire Files with a bunch of good videos about what's happening. Naomi Klein has a book called The Shock Doctrine and another one called This Changes Everything. And then finally, Professor David Ray Gritton Griffin wrote 10 books on the myth of 9-11, and he's got a book on uh, the climate crisis that's a summary of the top 100 books on climate change. The, you know, those two books, This Changes Everything and Professor Griffin's book, I highly recommend it. Thank you. Charlie! The only book I read is The Art of the Deal. <laughs> Good for you, Charlie. <laughs> Some common wisdom in there. And it, they were passing around a photo. Somebody took a photo of the bookcase at the White House, and there was nothing in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the shelves were empty. It's like All right, let's thank our speaker for uh, years of uh, hard work and putting together. I think I'll be eclectic here. Um, on a number of topics here, some I have not heard tonight. Uh, the Hillary Clinton ran a textbook campaign. I've heard all kinds of things. She should have done this and that and that. Da, 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 da. It was a very textbook campaign. She didn't do anything wrong. Uh, maybe the guys had a different one. That, that's why they won. Textbook needs to be rewritten. There was nothing wrong with that campaign. That was pretty much, matter of fact, it was a pretty good campaign. By many standards, yes. She had a good field organization, good media to raise money, everything did everything, but it wasn't quite 
the time or the place for it to work. Um, for many, many years, and I still have done this, I even subscribed to the statistical software in which I would assign ratings to members of Congress on <coughs> scores, like did you vote positively for education, and like scores of 85%, uh, do that in different subjects. And anybody who tells me that the Democrat and Republican parties are identical, I'm sorry, you don't have a very good idea of what you're talking about. They are diametrically opposed. The voting patterns are consistent over time, over Congresses. I've been over several Congresses have been following this, and they're even gotten further apart. So anybody who comes up with this Tweedledee, Tweedledum, uh, is assertion is, is, I'm sorry, wrong. Um, now I've heard some other things here about um, industries leaving the United States. And you may not be aware that I've been a union representative for a number of years. When I began my career as a librarian, I worked on the library of Wall Street for the New York Public Library. And something came about called multinational corporations we were, we were researching something called globalization. Um, this is a trend that happens. There's a history, an economic history to countries. It took something like 200 years for the Great Britain to industrialize. It took the United States 100 years. It took Japan 50 years. These are multinational trends. Um, to say that we're going to revert to some sort of nationalism economically isn't going to happen. It is not a realistic position uh, to say that these, these operations are going to return. That is not going to happen. That's why we say it's been said that you should put factories on sailing vessels and sail it to the country where you can get the cheapest wages. Uh, or you can exploit the workers. There's not going to be a retreat to this. I'm sorry, there are economic spheres in the world and they're competing right now. Um, there's another factor of um, uh, mechanization has not stood still. There's, prob there's so many things that's conclusively been said that uh, mechanization has result in, resulted in the loss of jobs in the United States, more so than the movement of any corporations. Okay. The media is, can, the media, I, I, I have not done any study of this, but I think in smaller communities, the only media that people get exposure to is, is are right to exactly the stock radio and Fox News. I was gonna write an article on this. Okay. If you live in a small town, we got time. Um, so you only got one, one station. And last of all, it's going to be the federal employees who are going to do in Trump because we got the goods on them. And I put together my own organization called FedVote. And he's trying to empty out the State Department. He's affected layoffs. Okay. They just put the thing out that they got the goods about him and the Ruskies and Putin. And now it's a contest. He actually came back. Okay, Charlie, he's trying to up. prosecute, looking for federal employees, trying to punish them for they got the evidence on them. But he's doing, he's digging his own grave by effecting a layoff in the State Department, this idiot. He's brash and, and he, you know, he just reacts like this. Okay. But those are the last guys who want right, to go Charlie. over. He doesn't have enough sense. What is that supposed to mean? It's been yeah, five I'll minutes give, and you violated the old rule. I'll give you a hand, <laughs> We're trying to, we're trying to keep yeah, it going here. here. It's here to be federal <laughs> The speaker gets the last word, and what I was going to say is to get this in for oh, the tape also, there's a humorous website called Coffee? No, no. Uh, Every Second Counts. Every Second Counts, 
It's humorous videos from other countries making fun of Donald hey. Trump. All hey, 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 who's your okay. hand signal? So everybody, if you want an uh, hour of good humor, log on to that site. Hey, we're out of time. Hey, take it easy, Charlie. We're out of time. Take it easy. Come on up. Let's see if it's the last word. How can right. you let him get away with it? He didn't get away with yeah, it. Yeah, he went out for another good minute. Look at that yeah. website. Every second counts. Okay. It is terrific. I've, I've seen it. They heard. All right. So Did you get the okay. last word. We Real quick, a... I want to say one thing uh, about Puerto Rico, which represents what's happening here, is that yeah. instead of helping Puerto Rico, what do we do? We're selling it off, just like Detroit, for pennies on the dollar. That's that's the new model, and Puerto Rico is an example of, of the shame that we have here. So um, I want. I think you're great. I mean, I think everything you've said is wonderful, and I'm not in disagreement. But what it means to me is that we're all working on different things, including progressives working on the environment all the time. We have so many groups. So we have the groups doing all these different things. We need to bring them together. I mean, that's all I want to say. So right. thank you. This was a pleasure. You were all wonderful. Thanks for having me. It's a good tune. You need some slow. Yeah. I didn't hear everything you said. Don't worry about it. I, you just said that I'm being.